Hi everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. In this video we are working on a 2019 BMW 2 Series convertible and this car is equipped with parking assistant and that means that this car can steer itself into a parking spot. That is if the system is working of course. On this car it's not. So let's see if we can diagnose this one together. Now, when you're taking a diagnostic job, it's always super important to talk to your customer. They can give you very valuable clues. Now, this car came from another workshop. They told me that this car has been involved in an accident, and that's a great clue. And the accident occurred at the front left of this vehicle. Now, they replaced several parts to restore the damage, but after they fixed the car, the parking assistant was no longer working. Now, they did some measurements, they even replaced the parking assistant control module, but the system is still not working. So in the next step, let's start out by confirming the customer complaint. We're inside the vehicle and I told the other workshop to bring the old parking assistant control unit just in case we might need it. Now this control unit lives in the trunk of the vehicle. The damage occurred at the left front of the vehicle. So the other workshop must have been pretty convinced that everything in front of the vehicle is perfectly fixed. Now, I don't think it's a coincidence that the parking assistant stopped working after the accident, but I guess we'll find out in this video. Now let's start up the vehicle. And there is a button to activate the parking assistant over here. Now let's push it. And when we do so, we will get a message in the dash that tells us no parking assistance. Please park unaided. Have the problem checked by your service partner. Now I guess today we are the service partner. We also get another message if we wait a little bit. And that's this message. Park assist failure. Parking maneuver has been canceled. Take control of the vehicle and have the problem checked by your service partner. Now that we have confirmed that there is a problem with the parking assistant, the next step is to check for fault codes. Now I've read the fault codes and there is a fault code stored. The fault code stored in the parking assistant is the 48-1E4F and it's ultrasonic sensors short circuit to ground in supply voltage and that is a permanent code. Now this vehicle uses six ultrasonic sensors in the front and six ultrasonic sensors in the rear of the vehicle. The four in the front of the bumper, one, two, three, four, are the ones that are used for the regular park distance control. The ones at the side are the ones that scan if there is a parking spot available and these are the one for the parking assistant. Now the problem is that all 12 sensors are all controlled so both the park distance control and the parking assistant is all controlled by the same module. Now the fault code was that there is a short circuit in the power supply for the ultrasonic sensors, but it doesn't tell us in which sensor. So basically the short circuit could be anywhere in this vehicle. The fault code doesn't give us a lot of information other than there is a short circuit in the power supply for the ultrasonic sensors. This could be at the rear of the vehicle, but it could also be at the front of the vehicle. It could be at the left side, could be at the right side, could be in the middle. We don't know. But since we talked to our customer and he gave us a fantastic clue, we're going to start our investigation at the left front of the vehicle. Now you might wonder, why doesn't the fault code give us a little bit more detailed information? Now to understand this, we have to take a look at a wiring diagram. So I took a look at all data, and when you look at all data, you can see that the power supplies for all these sensors are tied together. So when there is a short circuit in the power supply, it takes out all of the sensors. So when you look at it that way, the fault code description actually makes sense. Now when we take a look underneath the vehicle, I can definitely see that something happened at the left front. You can see all the bits, all the hardware has been replaced with new parts, even the plastic bits over here. When you compare it to the other side, you can see it's not that shiny. You can see shiny, not that shiny. So I can definitely confirm that something has happened at the left front side of the vehicle. Now we have got to start somewhere and I want to start our investigation with this sensor over here. 
it is at the left front and it's also the easiest to get to to do some measurements. So in the next step, I'm gonna take off the wheel, take off these plastic bits, and then we should have decent access to that uh, parking assistance sensor. I removed the wheel and the inner fender, and now we got great access to that parking assistance sensor. We can do our measurements right over here. Now immediately we can see that the tape that's being used is not original. Now the original tape looks something like this and it's not the shiny plastic stuff. So somebody has definitely been in here before. Now it also feels like there's, I can't bend this piece. So like there's a connector or a solder joint in here. But anyway, let's start out by doing some measurements at the connector of this sensor. I disconnected the connector from the sensor and I'm going to gently front probe with a very thin probe, pin one, which is a green and white wire, and that's supposed to be the power supply. Now the power supply is supposed to be between nine and 16 volts, or at least that's the range where the sensor should operate. So I'm expecting to see battery voltage over here. And the middle wire is the signal wire, which is actually a LIN bus. And the third wire is the sensor's ground. Now I hooked up one side of my test light up to battery negative, so ground. So when I touch a power supply, my test light should light up. Now the ignition is on, the system is on, but as you can see, the test light doesn't light up. Now let me relocate my test light from ground to battery positive. So when I now touch a ground, the test light is going to light up. So let me quickly relocate uh, the sensor, or sorry, the back probe, or in this case, front probe to the ground wire. Now. When I touch that, the test light should light up when we have a ground, and it does. Now let me relocate it to the power supply. And when I touch that, the test light does also light up. So instead of having a ground and a power supply, we now have two grounds. So that is fault code confirmed. We have got a dead short to ground on that power supply. Now I quickly want to check that now that we have got the front left sensor disconnected, if the fault code changed. But as you can see, we still have got exactly the same fault code. So the system doesn't even recognize that this sensor is disconnected. Now, as I mentioned before, this tape is not original and I feel something hard in this wiring harness over here. Now there's a connector or a solder joint. Now it's a little bit thin for a connector, so it's probably a solder joint, but this doesn't feel original. Now, somebody has been in there before and it's in the general area of the accident. So I want quickly want to peel down the tape to see what's going on and to make sure this is not our short. I peeled back the tape and as you can see, they soldered the wires back together right in this area. Now it's well insulated, they aren't touching and they didn't mix up the colors. So it's not causing our issue, but it's kind of nice to know and it gives us some peace of mind that the problem is not staring us in the face all the time. So let's continue our troubleshooting. Now basically the short circuit could be anywhere in this vehicle, anywhere in that supply wire or in any sensor for that matter. Now I quickly did a visual check and the only piece of wiring that wasn't original was the piece we checked. All the others look untouched or at least as far as I can see right now. Now there is a lot to check but we can use some logic. There are some connectors in the system. For instance there's a big connector and the other side in the wheel arch which connects the front sensors. Now, if we disconnect that one and nothing changes, we can rule out everything that comes after that connector. Now, by disconnecting some pieces of the system, we can hopefully narrow it down until we have found our issue. Now, also remove the wheel and the fender on the right side of the vehicle. And I guess I was wrong about the plastic tape because on this side, they use exactly the same stuff. Only on this side, it looks old and original. And on the other side, it looked new and shiny. And maybe that's what caught my attention. Anyway, I guess in the accident, the front bumper was also damaged and it's probably replaced. I'm not sure, but maybe the wiring in that bumper was also damaged. Now in the front bumper, we've got four park distance control sensors, which share exactly the same power feed. Now we can disconnect those by disconnecting this connector over here. And you can see that same white and green wire, which is our power feed. Now, this way we can rule out the entire wiring in the front bumper. Now, if nothing changed, we can be sure 
the problem is not in the front bumper and we can rule out that entire section and move on to the next one. I've read the fault codes again and this time we've got a lot more fault codes. It even sees that some of the sensors are disconnected. Now that means with that connector disconnected, the entire system came back alive and the short is now gone. That also means that the short circuit is somewhere behind that bumper. We have to remove it and we have to do a visual inspection and maybe some measurements, but at least we were able to rule out a big portion of that circuit and we now narrowed it down to the front bumper or somewhere behind it. Now another quick test to confirm our findings. I hooked up one side of my test light to battery positive. So when my test light touches the ground, the test light will light up. Now I hooked up the test light to that green and white wire, the power feed for the outer right sensor, the parking assist sensor, the same that we tested on the left side. Now remember that all the power feeds are tied together. Right now the test light is not lighting up because there's no short to ground, but this connector is also not connected. Now let's see what happens when we reconnect that connector. So again, when the test light finds a ground, it will light up. So let's reconnect that connector. And as you can see, the test light lights up. And when we disconnect it, the short is gone. So all we have to do now is follow that wiring and find that short. I removed the front bumper and to be honest, I don't think that the damage was too severe. I mean, yes, a lot of the bolt on stuff has been replaced, but structural, like the beams and everything, they seem untouched. Now I did a visual inspection of that front bumper or rather the wiring harness and I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with it. Now one thing did stand out to me and that is that all these sensors are marked to make sure that whoever worked on it placed them in the original position. That means that all these sensors were reused except for one. This one is not marked and that indicates to me this one was replaced with a brand new one. Now, long story short, let me show you what I found. With that connector connected, we still have got a short in this harness. Now let me show you what happens when I disconnect this sensor. Nothing. Let me show you when I disconnect this sensor. Nothing. Long story short, let me show you what happens when I disconnect that new sensor short goes away. So let's disconnect it, or sorry, let's connect it. There we go, sensor connected, disconnected, connected, disconnected, and that means the short is caused by this new sensor. Let's take a closer look at one of the original sensors, and this one says center left, written in Dutch on there. And this one has got a QR code, and the part number is printed on the side of the sensor. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you have to take my word for it. It says Bosch and there's a Bosch number and the original BMW number. Now, when we take a look at the new sensor, there are no markings whatsoever. No manufacturer, no numbers. Now, when a manufacturer doesn't put its name on a product, that usually means they're not very proud of it. Whatever it is, it is not original, it's aftermarket and it's causing our issues. The next thing I'm going to do is order a new sensor from BMW. Now these sensors come pre-painted. Now when it comes in, and this will probably take a few days, I will install it and reassemble everything and I'm pretty sure everything will be fixed. So when I get back to you, hopefully I can show you that the system is working. Now it's three days later and I installed the new sensor and the system is totally happy. I've got no more fault codes, no more messages on the dash. Now am I 100% satisfied? Well, no. On closer inspection, I realized the orientation of the connectors was off. On one side they were up, on the other side they were down, and then I realized they actually installed the wrong bracket for that parking assist sensor. They used a park distance control sensor bracket. And on the other side, the bracket was loose, and that means that the sensor is not totally flush with the bodywork, and this can lead to false reading. So. I'm going to tell the other workshop about it and they have to resolve this issue. But for now, I installed everything as good as I could and run away to a parking lot to test the system. So at the parking lot, let me activate the system and drive by this row of cars. And it has found a parking spot. It tells me to stop the vehicle, turn on the turn signal, reverse slowly, hands off the steering wheel, there we go. It tells me to drive forward slowly. There we go. 
and reverse again. And that's it. The car is perfectly parked. I'm going to contact the other workshop and tell them to resolve the issue with the brackets. Now, what can we learn from this video? Now, first of all, and I'm not the first guy to tell you, but new doesn't always mean good, especially when it comes to sensors. Use an original sensor or original quality, so something equivalent to the original. Another thing we can learn from this video is if you need to check a big circuit, try to break it down in smaller pieces and that can save you a lot of time. Now, another thing is use common sense. Now, some people might say we were lucky that we found the issue when we disconnected that first connector, but were we? I mean, the car was damaged in the front. It didn't work after the accident, so our answer is probably going to be in the front of this vehicle. So please use common sense. And if something didn't work after the accident and the accident was in the front, don't go looking for the answer in the trunk of the vehicle. Now, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. And when you hit the little bell, you'll get a notification each time I upload a new video. And remember, diagnosed then, fixed it again. See you next time, guys.